My name is Ben Kochi. I'm going to MC this afternoon. Um, and our first speaker is uh, Frederick Brunchik from CoreOS, and he's going to talk about uh, alert manager and high availability. Uh, availability. Uh, he's got a background in distributed systems and rely, uh, rely, has some experience in reliability. So it should be a great, uh, great talk about the alert manager. Thanks, Ben, for the introduction. So yeah, um, I'll be talking about uh, alert manager and high availability. We've actually already heard about the feature itself a couple times today, um, and today I want to uh, bring some light into the darkness of this dark magic, how it actually works and what that means for us running Alert Manager and high availability. Um, yeah, I'm uh, an engineer at Chorus and I work on upstream Prometheus, Alert Manager and Kubernetes and like everything that connects the two worlds. Um, so yeah, uh, which is, uh, so, which brings me to something that I want to bring up uh, front. Uh, why does Chorus invest in uh, Pr Prometheus and the community? Um, that's uh, because of our enterprise Kubernetes offering, um, Tectonic, um, which basically has Prometheus monitoring fully automated uh, so that you can focus on building your uh, product rather than monitoring infrastructure. So um, what will I be talking about today in terms of high availability? So I want to talk about how Prometheus um, how we get from Prometheus generating alerts um, to Alert Manager receiving those, um, then the high availability contract between those two applications, um, then how that how that actually works, and um, what that means in terms of implications for us running um, the Alert Manager in high availability. So we've already heard this uh, somewhat, and this is also uh, a non-exhaustive list, but. Uh, the main features of Alert Manager is that it um, receives and groups alerts um, into a meaningful message um, or notification. Um, it deduplicates those so that we don't get uh, notified every uh, 30 seconds or however often Prometheus sends those alerts to Alert Manager, but in a reasonable time span so that we can actually fix these problems that occur rather than just get alert fatigue. Um, and uh, then it has routing so that we can say, for this particular service, we want this team to receive a notification on Slack or via PagerDuty or all the other um, integrations that Alert Manager uh, has built in. And uh, beyond that, the Alert Manager also has silencing. So when, when, if we know that there is a maintenance window um, where we know our application is going to behave in a different way or um, there are all, all kinds of uh, situations where you might want to mute uh, uh, an alert firing, then um, that's where you want to use silencing. But um, in terms of the high availability contract between Prometheus and Alert Manager, that's this is like the, the architecture diagram for Prometheus. You've probably seen this uh, if you've worked with Prometheus. Um, but what we want to focus on today is um, how we get from PromQL uh, generating our alerts and alert manager receiving those and then um, what that means for high availability. So um, if you've uh, seen or yeah, if you've seen how Prometheus actually generates alerts, so you have a, an alerting rule and that gets evaluated every 30 seconds or so and whenever that alerting rule triggers, Prometheus sends um, an alert to the alert manager. and um, if we have multiple Prometheus instances that um, then they're supposed to actually ge generate the same alerts and fire uh, both fire the same alert uh, at the alert manager, which is why the alert manager needs to deduplicate de those. Um, and then because we get all of these alerts um, from Prometheus, possibly about the same service, we want to actually get a meaningful notification and not, we're probably not interested in every single alert, but we want to have an overview. So this could be uh, an example notification that you could get through the alert manager. So boiled down to the point is that alert manager reliably um, groups and sends notifications. Now um, let's see what that means for high availability. For, for that, I first want to show the general idea why, why we need a high availability mode 
in the alert manager. So let's say you have uh, some kind of a project and um, you still build, start building your services and you build service one, two, and three, and maybe you start making some money with that. So you want to actually monitor what you make, what you are producing here um, to have some kind of guarantee that um, your users are going to be able to access your application. Um, and then for you to actually get notified if something is wrong, you want the alert manager because that actually sends the notification to PagerDuty. No, but um, your project is actually really successful, so you scale out your infrastructure and make it highly available. Um, but suddenly, um, all your infrastructure for your user-faced application is highly available and um, everything's great, but now your monitoring is actually not. So um, you add an additional Prometheus instance to that, which all scrape the, the same targets, so they produce the same alerts, and they both fire against the same alert manager. But now we can already see, um, we again have another uh, single point of failure here, which is um, the alert manager. And so we create another instance of alert manager, but now the problem is because single instances of alert manager are deduplicating those um, alerts that all Prometheus instances are firing, if the alert managers don't know about each other, then we're still gonna get duplicated um, notifications. So what was implemented to uh, do this is a gossip protocol for uh, the alert managers so they can share some state about uh, notifications that have already been sent. And um, that's really the key here um, to the high availability implementation. Um, so now we can uh, first take a step back and realize why Alert Manager and Prometheus are actually two separate components. So um, why this is really great is that uh, we can keep Prometheus to really be really simple. It, it's not simple, but like to be very focused about, it's a time series database and we can query it and it produces alerts. Um, and that allows us, as we've seen today already, that Prometheus high availability is just a matter of spinning up another instance of Prometheus, which scrapes the same, same targets, therefore produces the same alerts. Um, and otherwise, if let's say Prometheus and Alert Manager functionality would be uh, in the same application, then um, there would have to be um, this type of uh, information sharing, state sharing between those instances. And we want to keep that, which is itself a complicated problem um, into the alert manager. So uh, an example alerting rule that we could have, for example, for etcd, which is a distributed key value store, in case you're not familiar with it. Um, so in etcd, you have the um, notion of a leader. So whenever an etcd cluster doesn't have a leader, um, you can, can perform writes to it, because that's how um, the ref protocol uh, ensures consistency. And that means if the leader is not present or no leader is present for the entire cluster, then uh, that could be could turn out to be bad. So this is basically the alerting rule um, that would detect that. And just to make sure that we all understand that Prometheus alerting is not, there's nothing magic. Basically you have all your rules that you have in your rule files and Prometheus loads those and then every evaluation interval, Prometheus just Ex executes those, and if they trigger, it fires an alert against the configured uh, alert manager instances. So there's really no uh, dark magic involved here. Um, and this is a simple uh, alert manager configuration um, where we just have one route and we group everything by the job label and um, just send that to a, a webhook configuration. And um, whenever we don't, uh, so we have a resolve timeout of five minutes, and um, yeah. Now, when an alert actually hits the alert manager, um, that alert goes through a notification pipeline. So that basically is the sequence of these um, components. So first of all, the alert manager checks, uh, has this alert been silenced? So it checks its silence database, does any silence match? If no, then we continue. Um, and the next step is the wait step, and this is very important for the high availability um, uh, functionality, which we'll see, get, go into a bit later. Um, and then the alert manager checks whether this particular 
alert has already been notified about, and that's the deduplication step. If it hasn't, then we go on to the next step, which is uh, which actually sends the um, notification out. And once it's not successfully sent the notification, it will gossip that it has successfully done so. And um, now we can talk about what the alert manager actually gossips. So what we just talked about is that the alert manager gossips the, no the send notifications. Um, there was often been asked, uh, there, was, there was often the question asked why we don't gossip all the received alerts that all the alert, alert managers get. Well, that's a simple question because a simple answer because there would be that, that the sheer volume of the alerts received by all alert managers would be just too much. Uh, information shared, and the actual information that we need is whether this alert has been notified about. Um, and then additionally, um, so that all the alert managers have the same silences, also the silences are gossiped. Um, so by, but how do we actually do this? And we do do it with uh, CRDTs, and uh, we, we did that because it really well fits this particular um, use case because we want an, an available system. So in terms of distributed systems theory, the cap theorem, this is an AP system that we want to build. Um, and that's what CRDTs are really good for. But this is the theory. How did we actually do this? We use the library um, called Mesh by Weaveworks. And um, that basically gives us most of the infrastructure to build this. And we only had to design the um, CRDT um, that is actually gossiped. So um, it gives us uh, an eventually consistent system um, where like the last writer wins uh, element set that, that's our, our choosing that we um, built the data structure like that. And um, basically what we're doing is we have a log of uh, records that are timestamped and whenever the, there's a larger timestamp, then um, we overwrite that um, particular record. Um, and how we identify those is with a unique ID. Test. <laughs> so um, you might ask, well, why didn't we take a distributed system that already existed, such as etcd, which is like a reasonably, um, like, really well-developed de uh, database, and um, it's been battle-tested. It works really well. Um, well, one, th one point would be um, the alert manager is a single self-contained binary. You can just, you just need that to drop that binary on your server, and you can run it. Um, so we have, if we then also had etcd in there, then we also would have to, to have a connection to etcd, and that um, brings in a lot of baggage. Um, but most importantly is uh, we want to build an AP system, whereas etcd, if there's no leader, as we saw earlier, um, will block writes. So in that case, um, we wouldn't get a, a notification, whereas in the AP case, um, we potentially get multiple notifications, but that's better than none for, uh, for reliability. So let's go into how um, this actually, this merge process works or for different scenarios. So um, when we create a silence, we have multiple uh, instances of alert manager, that manager zero and one. And they both have already some records in their database. And now I go ahead and hit the create endpoint for the silence and the alert manager zero immediately writes that into its database and produces a delta of what it's just written to the database. And then it gossips that delta to all other alert manager instances, and they then take that delta and merge it with their database, and um, eventually then both instances have the same database. And then periodically they sync so that uh, you can make sure that at least periodically the database is always in sync. And um, if we update silences, let's say we already have two records in our database, then, and I want to update that particular silence, then um, I just overwrite that particular field in the database, and the database again returns the delta for me, and I just um, gossip the delta 
to the other alert manager instances and they merge it into their state. That, so that's not really that complicated because for silences we can just ge generate a UUID, um, whereas for um, notifications that's a bit more tricky. Um, so let's look at how this works for notifications. Um, first, let's see um, why notifications uh, or why this is why it's really important for us uh, to gossip them in, the, in this way. So we have a Prometheus instance which fires alerts against two alert manager instances, and um, here comes exactly this wait step into play. Uh, that I mentioned earlier. So alert manager zero waits for zero seconds and then continues in the notification pipeline, whereas alert manager one waits for five seconds. And while alert manager one is waiting, alert manager zero um, goes through the steps and deduplicates and sends the um, notification out and then gossips the state. And after a while, um, the alert manager one after five seconds um, will continue this, but has already received this gossip data. So when it reaches its deduplication step, it will not send out this notification because it has been informed that this notification has already been notified about. Now, um, here comes exactly into play why it's important that we have an AP system. Um, so um, if we were to block writes at all times in a CP system, um, then we couldn't do, uh, couldn't handle this failure uh, where we have like a network partition between the two alert manager instances in this case um, where the gossiping cannot take place. And that will, in its worst case, give you two notifications, uh, which is much better than getting no notification about your system not being up. And um, the, the, the merge operations basically work the same way, except that there's different data in here. So uh, instead of the uh, matcher for the silences, we have the alerts that have been resolved that ha and that those that have been notified about before. Um, and when an alert fires, it goes through all of this um, pipeline. And if there's a new alert, we actually uh, no, new notification, then we write it to the database. And we do the same thing where we gossip the delta and then merge it into the other databases. Um, but as I said already earlier, we can't just generate a unique ID for all of these notifications. Otherwise, we would again get duplicate notifications for everything. So we need to somehow generate a key that is always the same for the same set of alerts. Um, for the same route. So that's exactly what, what's happening here. When the alert goes through the uh, alert routing tree, it collects all the values for the labels that have been matched against, and those are, um, then the routes are XORed and concatenated with the receiver, because technically you could um, receive those with multiple receivers. So um, now we saw how all that works in theory. That's, check that that actually works. Can everybody see that? Okay. So um, I'm just starting a couple of um, alert manager instances, three here actually, and a uh, example webhook application, which will, when we send a notification, just print it to standard out. So I have a simple script that will just send an alert payload to all my um, alert manager instances. And um, as we already saw above, all of those instances uh, put some debugging, debugging output in there that they've received alerts. So let's have a look at the UI. We can see that indeed a couple of alerts have been um, received um, by all of our uh, instances, but uh, the interesting thing now is whether we have only received one notification here. So let's look at um, the output, and indeed, uh, the webhook only gives us one notification blob, so our high availability here has worked. We've only received one notification instead of three, which would, would have been the case if they were not connected. 
Um, and just as just to show that that also works, let's also create a silence. So I created the silence on the uh, instance with the port uh, 95 at the end, and we can check whether um, the silence also exists for the other instances. So for this one and for this one. Yeah. Yeah. So we have successfully gossiped uh, all our state, and we only receive one notification. So High availability works. <laughs> That's it. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Okay, there are lots. Hi, so I have one question. Uh, in your the start of your uh, explanation about uh, CRDTs and how you merge them, you mentioned timestamp. Um, so am I correct that you use uh, that local timestamp to do the last while rain and so on? And the question is, uh, do you consider using vector clocks or stuff like that? Because timestamp, you know, eh. Yes, um, actually, we, we did think about that. Um, but uh, so far, we haven't actually had any problems with this. Um, so this was just a simple solution that we started implementing in the beginning. But um, if there's an actual necessity for it, like if people actually have problems, then there, that's certainly a, a possibility to use. Um, the thing is that we also use um, waiting for with the uh, times, right? So we can be, even if the clocks are not totally in sync, it's uh, we can in a reasonably reasonable range, expect that, that that will still work every time. Uh, just a quick follow up. Yes, for the, the way, uh, I agree for the like sending notifications and so on, but for merging the data, if like one box is one hour late because of you know summertime and stuff, it might actually merge the data in the other way around. Yeah, that's totally true. Okay. We should probably use it. Yeah, um, I just checked. I'm actually just downloading the newest version from GitHub, but the last version I have doesn't work on IPv6. With high high, high availability mode, doesn't work. Is this something anyone but me cares about? Um, <laughs> I'm actually not actually sure there, if there's an issue for it. Uh, if not, yeah, then th do there is it. a similar issue. Yeah. yeah. Exactly so, the, so so the problem is that um, that doesn't really depend on us. It depends on the uh, mesh library. Yeah. Um, I'm not, not sure if it already has it implemented, but um, once the mesh library implements IPv6 support, we just need to update the dependency and it should work. Okay, so I will try to file more issues. Sure. That should work. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was wondering if you talk about um, yeah event correlation from SNMP traps, from event uh, critical messages, and even from this morning's talk about getting analytics into this and maybe correlating all these uh, different, not only, I guess you're doing synchronous polling and thresholding, but also asynchronous events coming in. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question, can you? Uh, so the question is, if you have alerts coming from elsewhere to try to do analysis on them, the general answer is put that out into some other system like OR and do the analysis there. Okay. That's the general answer, answer with Prometheus, because that's a, a different and more complicated space. Okay. Uh, who's next? How do I time? There's there and there, and back there as well. One. Hello. Hi there. Um, I'm just curious why you did the uh, gossip wait uh, times instead of like a consistent hash or something. Um, actually. Uh, I think that question would be, uh, I would give off to Fabian. I think it was just a design decision and it uh, turned out to, it yeah, it turned out to work really well. Um, so if, if it doesn't work for anyone, then we should explore different uh, implementations, but so far it hasn't created any problems. So if you use consistent hashing, right, and just you expect a peer to actually send this out and 
it just doesn't do it. <laughs> yeah, but you had Harvey. You're not doing it either, right? So this weight is just an easy mechanism for everybody to always send it out and just like deduplicate that by just waiting for a bit. And how do you? So when do you remove people from the uh, list of gossip peers? Whenever Mesh does. <laughs> Which is never. It does. I'm pretty sure. Only if you restart them all. No, I'm, no, I'm pretty sure it does. <laughs> so how do you? I mean, it shouldn't, right? Because that's not safe. But how how so, do you then like make sure that you reset the wait times? So so, so there. Are, uh, maybe I just hit the edge case, but um, there was also an issue where actually, depending if you have different ports, it everybody joins. But if the initial peer goes away, everybody leaves the cluster. Like, yeah. And there are some mesh things that are certainly we need to figure out. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are we supposed to remember this? Oh, and the, there's a couple of PRs to make IPv6 work, but it probably doesn't work yet. So yeah, um, if you if you have encountered this, I didn't know about that, so just find issue and we'll check it. Cool. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the ordering of the uh, alert managers. Uh, who sets that order? Is Prometheus saying you're the first in my list, you're the first in my list, or are the alert managers making that out in their own? Yeah, actually, so that's something that, that we also take from the mesh library. So we basically take all the members and the um, order that we get there um, is the position times five seconds uh, that you wait. So it's completely internal in the alert yeah. manager cluster. Okay, thank you. Mm. Hello. Frederick. Uh, okay. Uh, this uh, is the last question. Uh, so, you said we actually sync the silences every periodically, right? Do we also sync the notification log? Yes. So uh, that happens for for all, all the state that is shared uh, okay, through the the notification log can get really big, right? Yes, but it's um, garbage collected after ah. um, a certain time. All right, thank you. Thank you.